our chapter on the gas laws. This is going to be one of the easiest chapters you've had in quite some time. There are only four variables that describe a gas. Number of moles of the gas, pressure, volume, and temperature of the gas. We're going to look at only two of those variables in our first gas law, pressure and volume, while number of moles and temperature remain constant. This is known as Boyle's Law. Pressure and volume change while number of moles and temperature remain constant. We're going to watch two short videos to give you an idea of what's going on on the molecular level when we deal with Boyle's Law. A decrease in the volume of a gas sample results in an increase in pressure because the gas particles will hit the walls of the container more often. When the gas molecules are compressed by the piston, the pressure increases and the concentration of the gas in molecules per unit volume also increases. You can see in both of those videos that as your pressure went up, your volume decreased or, of course, the decrease in volume was what caused your increase in pressure. This is known as an inverse relationship. Pressure times volume will give you a constant value. In numerous experiments done by Boyle, as he increased the volume of his gas, he noticed that the pressure of the gas decreased. So looking at our set of experimental data, as our volume increased, then our pressure decreased. And the product of pressure times volume was always a constant with in experimental error results. There's an equation that represents this. But there's a simpler way to solve these problems without memorizing an equation. If we look at the logic and follow Boyle's Law, we can set up a simple ratio to help us solve the problem. In this problem, we have an initial volume of 10 liters. We're trying to find the new volume. Our pressure has gone from 2 atmospheres to 4 atmospheres. In this scenario, our pressure increased. According to Boyle's Law, if our pressure goes up, our volume has to have gone down. In order to get our 10 liter volume to go down, we will set up a ratio of these pressures that will give us that effect, putting the two atmospheres over the four atmospheres to give us a final volume of 5 liters. Again, setting up the ratio 2 over 4 will give us the desired effect of the reduced volume. Let's look at another problem. In this problem, we have an initial pressure of 2 atmospheres and our volume is changing from 10 to 20 liters. As our volume undergoes this change, our volume has increased. In order for our volume to have increased, our pressure must have decreased. To set up our ratio to give us that, we take our volumes, 10 and 20 liters, and set them up in a ratio that will give us a decrease in pressure. Let's go back to our four variables that describe a gas. This time, we're still going to keep the number of moles constant, but we're going to vary not only the volume, but now, keeping the pressure constant, we're going to vary the temperature with the volume. This is known as Charles Law, the relationship between temperature and volume. Anytime you do any gas law problems, your temperatures must be converted to Kelvin by adding 273. One of the more common gas law temperatures that you will use in the lab in the classroom 
is the 298, which is room temperature. Let's watch a Charles Law video. In this video, you can see that as temperature goes up while this gas is being heated and the container is allowed to move, the pressure remains constant as the volume expands. So if the pressure remains constant, temperature goes up, you will have an increase in volume. Charles Law, being a direct relationship, would have this mathematical relationship. Again, direct relationship meaning as one variable increases, the other increases, or as one decreases, the other also decreases. Charles' experiments took many gases, and as the temperature of those gases increased, as we can see the temperature increasing, we see that the volume also increases. Again, this is the mathematical relationship. If you take that volume over that temperature, you will get, within an experimental error, a constant value. So there's an equation that will allow you to solve Charles' Law problems. But there's also an easier way that requires no equation. It's the same method we used for Boyle's Law. Looking at this sample data, the first thing we would do is to turn our degrees Celsius into Kelvin. You must do that before you ever start the problem. Then looking at what happens to the volume. In this problem, the volume increased from 2.5 to 4.1 liters. So taking your original temperature, 298, you will multiply it by a ratio to give the expected result of Charles' Law. If your volume went up, your temperature had to go up. Set up your ratios greater than 1. What you really are saying here is in order to change the volume from 2.5 to 4.1 liters, we need to increase our temperature from 298 to 488 Kelvin. Of course, all of this occurs at constant pressure. Let's look at a second problem. In this problem, we are changing our temperature and looking at the effect on volume while pressure remains constant. First, convert your temperatures to Kelvin. Set up your original volume and look at what you expect the outcome to be. If your temperature has gone up, you expect your volume to go up likewise. Set up your ratio greater than 1, and you will get your increase in volume. Our next gas law deals with the reality. In both of these gas laws, we have had these expandable containers, but most containers don't expand, and they certainly don't in the chemistry laboratory. If you take this sealed aerosol can and throw it in a fire, it's certainly going to explode. The reason is that as the temperature goes up, the volume of this can cannot go up. Therefore, the pressure will go up, causing an explosion. So our next law, Gay-Lussac's law, deals with the relationship between temperature and pressure while volume is held constant. And this, again, is a direct relationship as temperature goes up, pressure goes up, and likewise, temperature goes down, pressure goes down. Looking at a set of experimental data, you can clearly see temperature increase, pressure increase. Again, there is an equation that you could use to solve, but we're going to go back to our method we've been using and apply the logic. First, we can see that our temperature is increasing. We do expect an increase in pressure. First, convert your temperatures to Kelvin. Take your original pressure 
and set up your ratio to give you that expected increase. The larger temperature over the smaller gives you that increase in pressure. The combined gas law will take each of these changes and treat them as if the effect on the variable under study is independent of the others. So you will have your original variable. Let's say we're talking about volume, 20 liters, and then we're going to have our pressure changes and our temperature changes and then our final answer. Again, this would be the equation we would have to be dealing with, but we're going to simply use our original method of solving these problems. Here's our set of data. We are looking for a variable in volume. If our pressure undergoes this change, well, our temperature undergoes this change. If we look, our pressure has gone up, so that would in we would expect our volume to go down from that effect. And our temperature has also gone up. If our temperature goes up, we expect our volume to go up. So we have conflicting effects on the final volume. Let's set the problem up. Take our 15 liters. Put in our expected result. Again, if our pressure goes up, we expect our volume to go down using this less than one ratio. Our temperature has gone up. We expect our volume to go up using our greater than one ratio. Putting all of the numbers into one calculation does indeed give us a final volume that is lower. This is because the effect of pressure okay, was much greater on volume, decreasing than temperature was on volume increasing. Let's look at another problem. We have a one liter cylinder that undergoes a pressure change and undergoes a temperature change. Looking at our data, our pressure went from 0.8 to 0.1 atmospheres, so our pressure went down which means our volume is going to be allowed to expand and go up. That explains this ratio. Looking at our temperatures, once converted to Kelvin, our temperature did increase. We would expect our volume to likewise increase, setting up our ratios with a greater to one average. Here, our final volume did indeed increase. In this example, our temperature had a much greater effect on the increase than our pressure did on the decrease of that final volume. The ideal gas law will be the next gas law that we study. That is a simple formula that allows us to solve for all of the variables at once.